In today's episode, we're going to take a look at five different ways that you can approach a grease pencil animation in Blender. I'm Luciano, and welcome to the Adventures of Lollipop Math. This episode is sponsored by me. Use the code below to get 10% discount on any of my products. Welcome back, everyone. I'm going to show you five different ways that you can approach a grease pencil animation in Blender so you can see how flexible it can be to work 2D in 3D space. So without further ado, remember to like and subscribe and let's get on it. So we just started a new 2D animation template. I'm gonna make my frames 13, zoom into that. I'm going to make sure that in my layers, we have our onion skin way up so I can see a bunch of frames. So I'm gonna start with the first one. And I'm gonna do this and I'm put my strength to one. Yeah, got my first frame and so I'm going to go down to the second frame. I'm going to ease out from it. Third frame, ease out a little bit more. Ease in the fourth frame. I'm going to start stretching a little bit. Then I'm going to stretch it more and separate a bit more, right? Something like so, because it gains speed. Frame number six, I should probably be squashing against the floor. And then seven, I'm gonna squash a bit more against the floor. Then eight, I'm just gonna bounce back up and so on. And then start easing out. As you can see, I've lost the volume. Terrible at drawing. And then I should be getting close to the one to the beginning. So you can see a shaky bouncing ball, but it bounces at least. So yeah, so you can see when where somebody like me that doesn't have any skills struggles a lot. You can obviously always go to sculpt and then fix this a tiny bit, like make it a bit bigger radius and lo lower strength and so now you can with your mouse or tablet however you prefer you can just like sculpt this a little bit so they look a little bit better right so this probably is a little bit more stretch and so on and then this one we probably want that line at the bottom to kind of be hitting the floor correctly again and then maybe this is not so stretched and then this one probably is more stretched then the next one, this should be kind of bigger. And then we can press shift to soften it out, right? It's not the whole point of the video to show you this part, but since we're here, I'm gonna make this a tiny bit smaller. And it's gonna get closer here. Right, so something like so. Let me get to that one because that one easing out towards that one frame that next frame that should be this one so now the play okay i know i should be better at this right this is what you get sorry and so now i'm gonna push this a little bit more there right there okay i don't want to take too much time but this is frame by frame right you get certain advantages because you draw every frame so you can draw it the way you want it or the way you can. Also, it depends heavily on your drawing skills, which in my case, they're not many. And so this is one way to approach an animation. I'm going to draw. I'm going to make sure that this is the one circle that I draw well. I'm going to put this one at the first frame or frame number zero because it's going to be repeated at the end anyways and now if I go into edit mode I can select this right and I can manipulate it the same way I would manipulate vertices so for instance I'm just going to grab move down I can actually use this the manipulators I can move it down a tiny bit then go to the next frame move it down a tiny bit more move it down a tiny bit more move down a tiny bit more or maybe a lot more and then a lot more and then here should be squashing against the ground so we're gonna scale it 
scale like that. So, right, maybe I scale it too much to the side and too much something like so. I can go to the next frame, scale it more, scale it more. And then I can actually, before I go and do the other frames, I'm gonna adjust the ones that I have. For instance, now, as, as we did before, I could, I could use sculpt and then go burp burp. So I can do my my more stretched frames, right? So more like so, right? I'm just going to play with this a bit, soften it up. I could potentially just use a scale and then something like that. Scale X, scale Z, scale X, right? And so it stretches as it goes and then yeah, something like that. Actually, this one seems too big. So this one, can make it not something like so. You can make sure that they are kind of aligned and working, going in the right direction. And then I'll just select these keys from here, right? I press Shift D, which is duplicate. Put them here. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So I'm going to press S to scale, minus for negative one, and it scales it based on the current time. And now I can put it back there, and you'll see that now I get point, point. I did one extra frame, so I can push it. We get a bouncing ball that's much nicer than the one I did before, right? but less organic, right? The other one has that feeling of handmade. <laughs> So that's another way. I'm gonna make this circle now by draw mode. So I'm going to make a circle again. But this time, I get a little bit of that. It's a little bit more circular, right? And so I get this. And now I'm going to duplicate this keyframe, Shift D, put it over there. I'm gonna stand over here and press interpolate sequence. Bam. What this does is basically kind of like baking every frame. So every frame has the same circle. Now the cool thing is here. I can go to multi-frame and go to use follow. And if I move this now, because I have only one keyframe being displayed and selected, nothing happens. But if I go and select all of these guys, for instance, and then move it down, you can see something is happening. It's basically moving this frame and then the next two are easing out from there and then there's a gap and then they're easing into the first one and to the last one. So if I deselect now and I can see it's not properly a bouncing ball but it's close. So I'm going to undo this and I'm going to modify this ball off. If you're a 3D animator you can imagine that this is a graph editor. I'm just going to push this a little bit more, push this a little bit more we get that extreme like V shape that you usually want to try to get in the bouncing ball. So now I'm gonna push this down and look at how they are behaving. Right? If I go to object mode, you can see that bouncing ball. From here, we can just modify the frames that we need. Maybe even rid of this one. See which one I wanna get rid of. I'm gonna get rid of this one, duplicate this one make sure because this is the only one that i want to modify i'm gonna go back to here this one is going to be the same deal just a little bit more squashed and then maybe this one is too far now so i can select them again turn on this push them down and now squash it there stretch it there and as you can see they do this squash and stretch gradually towards the first one so basically this midpoint is the keyframe where you're standing at and then from here on out and from here on in is whatever you have selected gradually out so if i go here and then do the same squash stretch there and as you can see this one is the most affected one and then the other ones are gradually less affected so we got a very similar result. Now the next one is a boring. Otherwise, it's still important to know that grease pencil is still an object. And so I'm going to draw a pretty circle 
well, pretty. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna go to sculpt mode. I'm gonna get a little bit better, right? Boom. And so as you can see, now that I'm in edit mode, there's this little point right there. And that's the origin of the grease pencil object. So I'm gonna move it over here. It's gonna make my life easier. And you're gonna see why. I'm gonna move this keyframe, which I did in frame 13 to the frame zero. So throughout the whole time when we get this drawing, modify it, override it, that's my drawing. So now I can jump back into object mode and switch here from grease pencil to top shift. I'm going to make a keyframe in frame seven with location rotation scale, and then up, and then duplicate that here, and then make sure that this one stays one frame. I'm gonna scale it down, wash it, right? Then this one is going to be scaled down again, shit, maybe a little bit less, so firm, firm, right? Then I can just reset the transform, spit it, do that, copy that over here as well, maybe make it a little bit down this one further up and then over here i'm just gonna reset that scale you can see it's a little bit uneven so i'm gonna push this keyframe over here then that's gonna make it a bit nicer and so i just go to my graph editor and very very much like you do with a 3d ball you can get the same effect. The problem that we miss here is that because we're using optic animation, we are losing the onion scale, which is a really powerful tool for figuring out what you're doing, right? Right? Cool, right? Awesome. So let's go to the fifth one. And so I'm gonna put this sphere around here. Press Control A and then apply just rotation and scale. And now I'm gonna create a keyframe right here again, as I said before, and move those keyframes to zero, just like, like we did before. And we're gonna copy them to frame 13. I'm gonna go down to frame thir six, scale that, right? If we actually wanted to maintain the volume properly with a 3D sphere, you can just go to the constraints and add maintain volume constraint, right? And if I now move the Z, scale you can see that it compensates the other axis so cool stuff right i'm just going to scale this down push it more or less where the floor should be or in my imagination at least just gonna push copy that keyframe there and same thing again scale it in the, in the z axis push it down a little bit more so it's still touching the floor and make sure we got a material with a Color, so makes sense right and then here I'm gonna scale it back but now I'm gonna scale it in the opposite in positive D push it up then the align here Z of the pip move it a little bit further up and then I'm here scale is normal scale is normal then now I can just go to the Z plate. Just move this up. So it bounces like a bouncing ball. A little bit more like a bouncing ball. You'd be asking by now, well, this is not Grace Pencil. Well, yeah, it's not Grace Pencil. But you select this, you go object, animation, big mesh to Grace Pencil. And we're going to just like make some edges make sure this is just 13 frames starting at zero okay and you can see that now we have a new grease pencil object i'm gonna turn off this and my 3d bouncing ball animation is as flat as a grease pencil animation usually is the only thing is that you can for instance add stroke but it will give you the stroke of the faces and i haven't figured out how to have just the borders, which probably Antonio Vasquez could answer. And yeah, this is really cool. You can grab an entire character and do a 3D animation and then have it turned into grease pencil and then draw more stuff on top of it. It's a better way to make it fit into your grease pencil animation. So bear in mind that all of these different little kind of techniques are interchangeable and you can add them to your workflow so you can create animation easier.
you might find that creating faces frame by frame is much easier but then having a cg body that you can then turn into grease pencil might be easier for other stuff and so on so let me know in the comments below if you know any other ways of approaching a grease pencil animation that i might not know and remember to like and subscribe and see me next time Thank you.